The square root square system is very easy. You're just going to cut squares and strips and sew them together to get what we call the basic square. And then the different ways you trim this up, you get all those different triangle units. We help remove the human element. You're going to get more speed, more accuracy, and you're going to move along quicker in your project. Therefore, you get things done. You don't have so many leftover UFO projects or whips, works in progress. And it's exciting because all of you have such a long list of quilts that you want to make. And there's that old saying that says, so many quilts and so little time. But with the square and the square system, it's going to move you up that quilting ladder of success. You're going to be able to start making quilts that you've only dreamed of. And you're going to be able to get all the way through to the finish line because you're excited and you're motivated and your work looks great and you keep working um, on the project. You don't have to put it up and think about a different way to put it together. So we're going to start out today with the new Grande ruler. The Grande is the newest tool in our arsenal, and the Grande is a multi-purpose tool. It's going to help you cut your squares and your strips for your basic square. It's going to trim all of those triangle units for options 1 through 17, which are the ones that start out with a square in the middle. And it's going to cut the center diamond unit for the diamond options, which are options 18 to 39. So let's look down here at our demo table, and this is our grande ruler. And so we're just going to use the edge of the ruler, and we're going to do a cleanup cut on our fabric. Now you'll notice I have a little cutting mat uh, on top of my big mat, because once I start cutting on my fabric, I don't want it to shift, and so I'm actually going to turn my mat after my cleanup cut. Now also, Notice that I have my mats flipped over so that I don't have any lines on my mats. I don't want all those other lines coming into my brain and coming into the focus of my eye. I want my cutting surface all one color so that I can focus on my fabric and focus on my ruler. So I have my fabric folded twice. So there's a double fold here and a single fold here. If I was going to cut a border, I would not do the double fold, but for squares or smaller units that you're going to get from that strip, it's okay to do that. Now, in the process of doing that, this is my single fold, and I have it nice and neat along with that selvage edge. And then I have a line right here on the ruler that is going right along that folded edge. My hand is flat. It is not like a spider. Cut with your hand flat. I use a smaller rotary cutter. I'm only using four layers of fabric. I don't need the big one. I come down here and start where there's no fabric. And I push my rotary cutter up right next to the edge of the ruler. And I start cutting just like that, holding it firm, not too firm. You don't want it to slip, not too loose. You don't want it to slip. Learning how to hold your ruler is kind of like learning how to raise kids. You need to know how tight to hold them and when to let loose just a little bit. So notice how I moved my mat so that I can come over here and keep cutting. I'm right-handed. If you were left, you would do the same thing. You would trim it, rotate it, and keep trimming with your left, okay? Now, my center squares are going to be three inches, and so my strips are one and three-fourths. So I'm just going to slide my grande over until I have my one and three-fourths marking. So I have a little arrow right there, and I can look up here and see it's my one and three-fourths and all the way down to the end. Now, my strips necessarily, whoops, I'm sorry, these are going to be my center squares. I want my center squares to be uh, my solid, more white color, because when I put my ruler on here to trim, you're going to be able to see it much easier. So I'm going to back it back over here to three inches. I want my squares in the middle to be three inches, so I'm going to cut a three-inch strip, and I'm going to have my hand flat, and I just make my cut. And you would continue on if you needed more, but one is all we're going to need for today. So once again, I'm going to turn my mat. I need to do a cleanup cut. So I'm just putting um, a line on the ruler along the um, cut edges, and I'm backing it in a little bit so that I can get my cleanup cut there. I'm going to turn my mat. So now on the Grande ruler, you can see here how we have this large nine inch, what we call a corner square. And I'm going to use three inches in here to make. So I'm just going to come in here and 
I'm lining my three inches up along the two cut edges, making sure that my square is staying square, that I have the, the good um, 90 degree arcs in those corners. And I'm just going to cut. Now, since my ruler is not um, off of the edge of the, of the, see, normally I want some ruler hanging off. But in this case, since I'm not, I'm starting in just a little bit. I'm not starting here at the corner. I'm starting in and I'm going out and then I can come back down. Don't move your fabric that you're going to cut. That's your four layers. You don't want it to shift. Now, I really like cutting knowing that all four sides are, are staying in the proper square 90 degree uh, shape. I don't want it moving. Lots of times you're only measuring from here to here and you're not checking here and here and therefore your square can get out of shape. And just come on in and keep cutting. Open that up where you had the fold. Now, if you have any little misshape because of the fold, they would call that like a dog uh, leg or a dog. Um, I think a dog leg is probably the most common term for it. Now see how you can come in here with your three inches and you're better able to work with it if you have a little bit different of a misshape and make your cut. So there I have my squares cut for my center units here of my basic square. I have four in a stack. Well, that one would be two. These would be four, so that'd be 12, 14 of those. Now I want to cut my strips that are going to be my surround strips. So since they're gonna wind up being short strips, once again, I'm not going to worry about the double fold and if my unit is not exactly perfect, but I do always try to work with that and make sure that everything here where my selvage and my folds are, that everything is lined up as nice and neat and even and here and once again I put the line a line from my ruler along that fold to help keep it straight so that I don't have so much um, or any of a dog leg there so move your mat and see you don't have to worry about your rulers don't move your rulers once you have them on there leave them on there okay now these need to be one and three fourths so I just slide it down and make my one and three fourths. Now our center squares need to be as exact as possible, but our strips that we're going to sew around, they don't have to be perfect. We don't have to worry about them being exact because when we get these sewn on and then we use the square and square system to trim them up to get all of our shapes, we're gonna trim off what we don't need. So the main thing is making sure that they're wide enough. 